Robert Brault once said, why try to teach a child a miracle when they can plant a garden? Well, we are at such a place today where a child can really experience those miracles. Back in 2019, Cynthia Wallace was a visionary. She created this garden, the colorful fence, the wonderful storage buildings, and the teaching area, plus an exciting thing, the Keyhole Gardens, which I had never seen before. So let's go explore this wonderful place for children. Sometimes we forget the fact that children are little people, but everything in this garden is designed for children, including these low profile beds here. And Marianne McGinley is one of the directors of the Giving Gardens, God's Little Laker. Marianne, can you tell us a little bit about these beds and this strip and what the purpose of the garden is? Yeah, so <clears throat> God's Little Acre is an extension of the Giving Garden and a place for children to have an immersive experience with the gardening and um, God's creation. Um, these beds are nice and low so that they can water and pick peppers and plants and, and see all of the things going on. The first thing that pops out to me as I walk through the gate is this wonderful expanse of bee balm. And Marianne, I bet this was a picture in the summer. Yeah, it's so colorful and the bees are just buzzing all around it, being active. And the bees pollinate the flowers and the, the other flowers and the garden uh, crops as well. And here is the uh, wonderful chives, which is an herb and also a bee attractor which we don't often think of herbs as being pollinator attractors, but they really are. Not only do they have wonderful chive plants here that are child size, but they also have another pollinator plant that I happen to love, which is the native nine bark, which is very attractive to pollinators. And by the way, comes in a huge variety of cultivars now. So if the big gangly here isn't quite your thing, there are lots of smaller ones that you can utilize for your garden. And right here, which is probably one of my very favorite plants for not only children's gardens, but anywhere, is hyssop. And once again, our um, children can get way down low and see the bees, and it's still got bees all over it. And a taller child can, can look at the top part too. And it's got soldier beetles on it, it's got Bumblebees is just a wonderful pollinator plant to have in any garden. Marian, what do you do about all these bumblebees and insects and the children keeping a safe distance? Well, it's definitely a concern and a concern that the kids naturally have, um, but the bees are doing a lot of work on their own and as long as we don't bother them, they are not gonna bother the kids. So it's usually not a problem. Okay, okay, good deal. What lessons have been particularly good for kids that they got really excited about and seemed to have a great time and really got it mm -hmm. about gardening? They love looking at all of the seeds and how different they all are and identifying them with the plant that they will become. Mm. And so we usually try and identify some seeds in some seed packets as the pitcher. So it's reinforcing it and then taking those seeds out to the keyhole gardens and planting them Fun. is so exciting. Do you do anything on soil or yes, composting? We, or? Yes, we love <clears throat> composting um, and learning about good soil and how important it is to the benefit of the plant. And we learn about what we compost and what we don't compost. I, <laughs> I always enjoy when the adults are like, oh, I learned something too. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. They have a little sheet of paper with all the different senses and several things to find on each sense, like find something long and tall and white for visual and something to smell. And we go out and we try and find everything on the checklist and then come back and talk about the discoveries that we made. Okay, and you know, if I tried to have a picnic at one of these tables, um, it's going to be really little yeah. and I, I can't fit in here. So tell me about this. Yeah, these were specially designed for kids so that they can fit and <laughs> feel comfortable in their own little space. And, and yet, and we're so thankful that they're so sturdy because they sure love to kick around the mulch <laughs> and wiggle. They're very excited to be out here. Okay, and you have children's size gloves and things we like do. that? We do, yes, yeah. yes, okay. and watering cans and tools 
that they get so excited that something that we went out of our way to find them something that would fit their bodies. Okay. And do you have kids that like seem to like special things like I'm the dirt guy or I'm the watering girl? You know, oh, and they just go right to that thing. Yeah, so. yeah. And the other kids that are like, oh, I don't want to do that. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to touch that yeah. or whatever. So. But this is an opportunity for them to try something that maybe they haven't tried before. And the parents love that about the program. Yes. And it, it connects them with the earth, too, yes. which is a wonderful thing. Yes. So. Hey, if I were a kid, this would be right where I would go. I love to walk on rocks and these are not too tall. So yeah, they're really actually, cool. Tell us about yeah, them. Actually, uh, not the other day, um, we were enjoying <clears throat> some coffee and the kids were out here and we remarked on how nice it was that we could just <laughs> enjoy coffee and they just had endless hours of play on the rocks. And we think we have to buy expensive toys. No. No. Stick a rock and a garden. And I bet you have some earthworm kids too, don't you? That oh, love yeah. Them. Oh, they yeah. They love to just mm. see the willies yeah. and crawlies. And, and what is this? What is that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Great. The other half of this dynamic duo is Sarah Morris. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. <laughs> and can you tell us a little bit about this trellis here? Yes. So the green bean trellis was something that Miss Cynthia Wallace came up with, and it's just a cool way for the kids to be immersed into God's creation, which is what we want them to experience when they're out here. And it's fun when they walk under the tunnel, they get to pick and harvest the green beans that they planted every time when it's in season. So it's just a really fun way for the kids to experience what they plant and grow. Okay, so they can walk through here and they can hopscotch, right? And they get to hopscotch. They get to hopscotch right out <laughs> to here. <laughs> Okay, I'll give it a go. <laughs> Sarah, you're a better hopscotcher than me. <laughs> I love these keyhole gardens, not only for children, but for myself. I wish I could have one in my backyard. But Sarah, tell us a little bit about the idea behind the keyhole garden. And you can see this is the keyhole right here. We have about 12 to 15 kids per class that come out <clears> and <throat> I like that it's in a circle formation. So when the kids come out, we we circle around the keyhole and it's a perfect height for one because they don't have to look up or bend down too far. And it also shows how much you can plant in a small space. Like for kids who don't have an acre of land to plant okra and pumpkins and strawberries, you, they just need one bed. So for each class that has 12 to 15 kids, we plant 30 different types of seeds in here. Okra right here. And you've got pumpkin behind you. Is that right? Yes. We and have... let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five keyhole beds right here. Yes. So that's great. And do you mix the plants? Do you put like carrots in with broccoli or Absolutely. One of the lessons that we have is companion planting, okay. which is another reason why I like the keyhole gardens is you can see what plants grow well with other plants, what plants mm -hmm. don't grow well when they're in close proximity to certain plants. So that's a lesson in itself. We found that recycled water bottles make excellent watering cans. We found that their hands are great for shoveling. And that's what this place is all about, is that's their time here where they can get dirty and it's okay. And we can figure out how small things can be used to make big, beautiful plants and help them grow. We don't need all these different fancy materials. You can go into a recycling bin and find water bottles and there's your watering can and you can okay. make it last for a long time. But they really enjoy just getting their hands in the dirt. We found that the hands are probably the best tool. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll see in some of the keyhole beds, you'll see the teacher's names and that's how the kids know that's my bed. Okay. And then they usually remember their spot. They're very good at going <laughs> to the exact spot that they planted and okay. that's their spot for this whole six week program. <laughs> that's wonderful. It's very funny. That's wonderful. And when they first come out, what do they do? Do they stand there and look a little bit afraid or do they just jump right in and start? doing stuff they they do they stand and they observe and we appreciate that I think that's how the teachers 
prep them before they mm -hmm. come into the garden. Okay. But you can tell they're very ready to get their hands in the dirt. <laughs> Such beautiful zinnias here for the children to enjoy. And Sarah and Marianne, I know most directors of anything, they have hopes and dreams for the future. We'd love to see more community members come out like our Boys and Girl Scouts, and Marianne and I have come up with programs that help other mothers with young children come out called uh, Coffee and Muffins. And they can come out and play, and the moms can interact, and we can help weed. Like, can I just show up? I don't have a kid, but I have a grandkid. Can I come with my grandkid? Please, okay. yes. <laughs> Anybody is welcome. We encourage more and more people to come and help and be involved in God's Little Acre. There is a process for people who want to volunteer with children, but just to be a volunteer, you can be anybody who wants to come. All is welcome. Okay, great. And how will they follow you? How, how will they know like when the work days are and how to get involved? There's, um, there's word of mouth. And then Marianne also created an Instagram page for those to stay connected online. So if you go and follow FFUMC God's Little Acre, You'll see all that we're up to, where we're meeting, when we're meeting, where is here, but when is on the Instagram page as well. Okay, cool. And adults, leaders do have to be vetted like through the church or whatever. So that's another safety net, but um, yes. Okay, so Marianne, what about you? What are your hopes and dreams? I think we need to get an herb garden in here for sure. It's kind of our lacking spot um, mm. and just, a thriving garden and enough volunteers to make that happen. Yeah. Okay. Well, we thank you so much for letting us come today to this beautiful space designed for children and to encourage them in connecting with the earth and also in spiritual ways. So thank you for taking your time out to be here. And you both got active four-year-olds. And so <laughs> <laughs> we know your time is precious, but we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. If you love gardening as much as I do, you'll want to subscribe to this channel. We showcase not only gardens, but gardeners as well, and the joy that the two of those mesh together can bring.